Welcome to the North Group Podcast. At North Group, we are often invited into organizations to influence leadership and organizational behaviors. It is through these sustained relationships that we gain a deeper understanding of each client and the many ways they benefit their employees, their customers, and the broader community. It is impressive. Through this podcast series, we will be sharing the stories of a few of these clients and how they make our communities better. I'm your host, Roger North, and I'm most pleased to be with my longest serving partner, Mr. Daryl Isey. Daryl, welcome. Yeah, Daryl, you you and I have been together uh, as friends and partners for 19 years, so it seems appropriate to me today that we're going to discuss the community value of one of our longest, uh, I guess, longest serving clients or one of the clients that we've had the privilege of serving the longest. Give us a little uh, little history, a little bit of a sense of Paul B. Zimmerman, Inc. Oh, sure. Well, I remember the, the opportunity that we had from the beginning was really to work with this wonderful family uh, to walk through the potential transition from one generation to the next, which is always uh, what we talk about. And, 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 and they were just so intentional about figuring out a way to do this well, to both honor their family, honor their faith, honor their business. And it, it's just been a privilege to work to work with them through that journey. And give us a little bit education about where they are in the generational process there. Yeah. Well, it was started by uh, Paul Sr. And, uh, Who would be Paul B. Zimmerman. Paul B., that's correct. <laughs> and uh, Paul had a number of sons that uh, ran the business uh, very well and uh, lived out the ethic that was started by their father. And that business has now transitioned to the next generation. And uh, while many of those brothers are still involved, uh, they have uh, actually given the leadership to the next generation in the family and other leaders. And now we're getting into, they're getting into the fourth generation of individuals who are working within the company. So it's really a joy to see. The company seems to have become, I don't know if this is the right term or not, but really quite sophisticated in maybe ways that don't don't meet the eye at the street level. You know, I think a lot of folks would think of them as a, a big, fun hardware store, but they're way more than that. Give us a flavor of that. Oh, sure. Well, I, I often think about they were actually my first client to ever have video conferencing. Okay. And they are very... This is a while ago. This is a while ago. Yeah. Uh, they've been very innovative. They've been very forward-thinking. Uh, all at the same time, keeping the values and the ethic that have been started from the company, which from the founder, which is now, they're now 75 years old. And uh, so celebrating the 75th year this year. And uh, they have a number of divisions within the organization. So many people, in fact, as a kid growing up, I knew all about Paul B's. Mm -hmm. You know, if you didn't know where to find it, go to Paul B's. They had it. Well, that one store, that small store in Wood Corner, uh, and Lidditz now has expanded to a very large facility, and they've added two additional stores, one just recently in Mechanicsburg, and they have one in Belleville as well. But in addition to the retail stores, they also have a wholesale division, which has grown significantly. That, that's relatively new within the 75-year history, is it not? Absolutely, within the last 10 years. Okay. They would yeah. have done that. Mm-hmm. And then another piece would be uh, their powder coating division, which is called Keystone Coating. And uh, they have two facilities. They have one there in, uh, in Lidditz and then one uh, up in Mifflin Town. There's diversification there. Mm-hmm. There's generational transition there. Beyond that, what would you say, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you say, what makes Paul B. Zimmerman different? Well, one of the things that I think about is primarily is they are genuinely humble individuals. And uh, it's a real joy when you interact with them. You, you could talk to the uh, president of the company, and uh, he, he's just talking to you like you're his friend. You know mm-hmm. that doesn't again say they're not sharp. They're extraordinarily sharp, but they're extraordinarily humble individuals. What do you think grounds them in that humility? Well, there's no question. It's their faith. Mm. It's their faith that is pervasive throughout the organization in terms of how we live that out. It's just fun to be able to work with them because even the work that we do, they are interested, very interested in the development of their people, but not just within the context of Paul B's. It's how can we be better parents, better husbands, better fathers, better wives? How can we be better community leaders? They have an interest 
in seeing individuals continue to grow, not just for their sake, but for the sake of the community and their families. We have a number of other clients, I think, that would have that same belief system that as, as, oh, yeah. as people grow and they're supported by their employer to take advantage of different growth, leadership, productivity opportunities, that that will bleed out into the larger world as well. But it seems to me like Paul B. Zimmerman puts an additional emphasis on that. Would that be your observation? And if so, how do they carry that out? No, absolutely, Roger. In fact, some of the work that I do with them, they're saying, listen, they're very intentional, not just with me, but with the individuals who are participating, which we've done a number of years in a particular group that I really frontline managers, you know, we're always running individuals through that, that process. And they're saying, we want them to grow as, as not just leaders within this organization, but we want them to grow as people and be better community uh, better for their communities so as it, well. So is it almost like uh, any benefit that comes to the business through that development is almost residual or secondary to what they're real, how they're really trying to help their people grow? There's no question. You, you, you would affirm that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And it's fun to hear the stories yeah. that they tell about individuals that have served. In fact, one individual is now the president of the, the school board yeah, uh, right, right. Where, yeah, he, yeah. Uh, where he lives. And uh, they're excited about that. I remember talking to one individual who, uh, who was uh, going through some work that we were doing and he was a member of another school board and talked about the lessons that he's learning that, that he, was, he was engaging with with the school board and how that was impacting that particular school as well. And, and the folks at Paul B were extraordinarily excited about it and said, that's what we want. We want our people to be better for our community. We want to be better for our community as well. I want to go back to, thank you for that. That was something I also wanted to ask you about, but I want to come back to that. I want to come back to this uh, marriage of humility and sophistication mm -hmm. because it seems to me, and I've had, you know, maybe not as many opportunities as you, but in the early years, a number of opportunities to interact with them. And the humility piece always came out. And you know, some very recent stories of the second generation, their humility and their generosity and so forth. Um, but there is a very uh, decided sophistication behind this business. Has that primarily been led by the development of the third generation? And, 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 and if so, what are some examples of that? Well, I think one of the things, you know, to respond to that question, I think that the third generation is beginning to, as they continue to move forward, but, but it's built off of what has happened in the first and the second generation okay. uh -huh. of really serving individuals, which okay. is driving this innovation and seeing not just the opportunity to grow, but seeing the opportunity to serve more and more individuals. And so absolutely the innovation there is just, is, I think is quite interesting, especially if you've been in this area for a while and you think Paul B's is a hardware store. Yeah. It's far more than far that. Far more than that. And would you say there, there's different kinds of innovation that we see in different types of companies. Would you say that they fit the model of if the customer needs it, we will find a way to make it for them, modify it for them, get it for them, source it for them? Is that the driver? Oh, absolutely. Well, I'll okay. give you a personal story. Yeah, please. Uh, I like to do some uh, home projects and, and I was looking at a particular, particular project and I wasn't quite sure what I needed, but I sort of had an idea. And I remember going into the store in effort uh, and, and sort of somewhat embarrassed because I didn't even know if, if, if it existed. And, mm -hmm. and I, I talked to one of the salesperson, in fact, his name was Brian. And uh, I remember Brian sort of looking at me, scratching his head, not really sure. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he takes off and he goes, I think I know what you need. And he starts taking off and I'm like, not running after him, but trying to keep up, <laughs> keeping up to him. And he remembered something that there wasn't a direct application, but it was something that he had thought about. And he said, I think this is what you need and it's going to work. It was meant for something else, but it was going to work in my situation, and it was perfect really? for what I needed. And so I'm just standing there, and this was a two to three dollar oh. piece, and I, I was just quite frankly, not, I wouldn't say stunned because I knew the organization, but I was pleased. I mean, I was excited, and this little two to three dollar thing is now 
quite frankly, allowing me to tell you that story. <laughs> That's more than a two to three dollar yeah. story, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you have talked about, and, and that, that example, I'm sure, is repeated probably many times over just on a daily basis yeah. with the way that they serve and interact with their customers. But beyond their customer base, we, we, we like to make the point that there's waves of benefit that well-run organizations offer that go beyond their employees and their customers. How would you characterize that with respect to the PBZ organization? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, number one, we go back to who they are. They're a solid organization. They're community members. You know, when you take a look at at uh, all of their locations, you know they're well they're well kept. They're clean. Mm-hmm. They're they're just they represent something that that goes back again to the founding of the company and to their faith and saying we want to be here to not just serve people, but we want to serve the community. We want to we want to serve their faith. We want to serve the Lord in in in, in just a myriad of different ways. Mm-hmm. You. Again, you interact with them. We talk, mm-hmm. We talked about their uh, innovation uh, that continues to grow. It's just fascinating to me to, to l- learn of little things that they're doing. Like, no, nobody else has done that. I was wondering, and you just, I think, led me here. I was wondering if maybe their humility, which is so pronounced there and beautiful, masks some of the ways which they benefit the broader community because they're they're certainly not going to blow a trumpet about it and it's certainly not going to be on the front page of their website i wonder if it actually masks some of the multiplicative benefits of pbz being in in, in the communities that they're in what do you think well, i think you know again sometimes we look at at, at organizations and, and, and you see the headlines, you see the, the photos. Uh, there's no question that it, it masks in terms of the visual, but the impact hmm. goes, beyond, goes beyond the front page. Their impact goes beyond, you know, having people know exactly who they are, even as leaders within the organization. And uh, yeah, so in response to the question, I would say, yeah, it does mask it, but it's not... You know, it, it's not, uh, you know, the old uh, hide it under a bushel. No, you know, it's like, no, we, we, we want it to be out there, but they do it in such a, a, hu- a humble and, and, and just gracious way that if you're not, again, you drive by the store and you think, oh, it's just a store. And then you drive around the back <laughs> and then you drive down the road and yep. you go to Mechanicsburg, you go yep. to Belleville, you yep. go to Mifflin Town and you're like, what? Yeah. But it's powerful. It's just, it's just a powerful organization. If you were to bring a few of your other clients to visit and learn from Paul B. Zimmerman, what do you think is the primary thing that another organization would learn from spending a half day or day with that team? I think the one thing that they would learn would be just the, the, the integrity at which they operate and the integrity that goes through the organization. This is not just about something that's said here in terms of, you know, hey, there's a mission statement on the wall. They are living that, they are actively living that out in every corner. Again, we're not saying perfectly, but it is very intentional and it, it, and it comes from the heart. That's exactly what they want to do. I think that's the one thing that people would learn. I would think that they would also learn that this is a genuinely nice place to work. Uh-huh. I hear that time and time again, you know, we, we, we see the impact of it where people are just pleased. Again, it's not for everybody, but the people who are there and the people who are coming in, are, in fact, it's fun to hear when I, I didn't know something like this existed. And nice certainly doesn't imply slow pace. No. Nice does not imply lack of follow through. And no. nice certainly no, doesn't imply all. Lack of accountability because I'm around there enough, not as much as you, but enough to know that all of those things, fast pace, fulfillment of commitments, high levels of accountability are in place for the right reasons. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, Roger. Well, no question that Paul B. Zimmerman is a 75-year-old now organization, yeah. uh, operated by the third generation with the fourth generation comes on coming on, makes our communities better. You would agree? Absolutely. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you.